Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. A maximum resolution of 0.25 micrometers means that anything smaller than this size cannot be seen under this light microscope. 0.25 micrometers is equal to 250 nanometers. An electron microscope has a maximum resolution of 0.5 nanometers. Typical viruses can be seen under an electron microscope, but they are smaller than the maximum resolution of the light microscope. Mimi virus and Pandora virus are larger than the maximum resolution of both microscopes. The first thing we have to do is to work out the measurement of the stage micrometer division. 10 mm divided by 100 gives us 0.1 mm. We can convert it to micrometers by multiplying 1000. The whole eyepiece covered 12 divisions of the stage micrometer scale. So, its whole length is 12 times 100 micrometers. There are 100 divisions on the eyepiece. The smallest division of the eyepiece reticule is 12 micrometers. The cell measured 30 eyepiece reticules, so its length is 30 times 12 micrometers. Lysosomes contain hydrolytic enzymes that break down large molecules for recycling. If the enzymes in lysosome do not carry out this function as usual, the digestion of biological molecules inside a cell cannot be done. This is why lipids may build up in the cell. Smooth ER is for lipid synthesis. If it does not function correctly, there should be a deficiency of lipids. The Golgi body collects and processes molecules, such as proteins, from the rough ER. It also packages them into vesicles for transportation to other parts of the cell or out of the cell. Goblet cell's function is to produce and secrete mucus, which is a glycoprotein. So, they require a lot of Golgi bodies to glycosylate proteins into glycoproteins and then package them for exocytosis. Chloroplasts, mitochondria, and prokaryotes have circular DNA and 70S ribosomes. None of them contain 80S ribosomes, so A, B, and D are wrong. Animal cells contain linear DNA in the nucleus and circular DNA in their mitochondria. A prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus. Its genetic material is not surrounded by a double membrane. They lie freely in the cytoplasm. Both eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells have double-stranded DNA. Viruses only contain either DNA or RNA. The first three options are found only in DNA or RNA. They won't be found in all viruses. Only guanine can be found in both. The solution does not contain reducing sugar, so the first Benedict's result is negative. The solution remains blue. After that, we have to boil it with hydrochloric acid for the hydrolysis of the non-reducing sugar. Warming the solution is insufficient as it requires a large amount of heat energy. Lastly, we must neutralize the solution to prevent a false positive result due to the presence of hydrochloric acid. One is an esterborn. It is only found in the lipid component of glycolipids. Two is a glycosidic bond. It is found in the carbohydrate chain of both glycolipids and glycoproteins. 3 is a peptide bond. It is found in the polypeptide of glycoprotein. The melting points of unsaturated lipids or fatty acids are lower than saturated lipids. It decreases as the number of double bonds in the molecule increases. Saturated fatty acids with no carbon-carbon double bond require more heat to melt because the molecules can align better to form stronger dispersion forces. In this picture, 2 and 4 contain carbon-carbon double bonds in their hydrocarbon chains. They are unsaturated. They melt more easily and would be found in a liquid more than in a solid. The primary structure of a protein refers to the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide. They are joined by peptide bonds, which is a type of covalent bonds. The secondary structure is due to hydrogen bonding between the oxygen of the CO group of one amino acid and the hydrogen of the NH group of another amino acid. There are four types of bonds involved in the tertiary structure. Hydrogen, ionic, disulfide, which is a covalent bond, and hydrophobic interactions. The association of polypeptides to form the quaternary structure 
can be due to the four types of bonds as well. Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. The higher it is, the more heat is needed to change the temperature of a substance. A is wrong because a low specific heat capacity means that air can change in temperature easily. B is correct as hydrogen has a higher specific heat capacity. C is not correct because it is not about vaporization but the temperature change. D is wrong because if there are more hydrogen bonds between water molecules in a gas, more heat energy is required to break the bonds and change the temperature. The specific heat capacity should be higher. When an enzyme is added, product formation is faster as the rate of reaction increases. However, the total amount of product form should not change as the substrate concentration is the same. A is the correct one as it shows a higher rate of reaction but the same amount of products being formed in the end. At region X, the rate of reaction changes as temperature changes. The fact that it is controlled by temperature shows that temperature is the limiting factor. A non-competitive inhibitor reduces the Vmax but does not affect the Km. So, its remover will increase the Vmax but does not affect Km. The surface area of a cylinder can be calculated by 2 pi r h times 2 pi r square. The volume is pi r square h. If you want to be sure of the answers, you can calculate them one by one and arrange them accordingly. However, you can also just look at the ratio of length to radius to get the sequence. If the water potential of the solution is lower than the cells, water moves up by osmosis and the volume of cells decreases, and vice versa. If the water potential is the same, there is no net movement of water in and out. The volume of the cells remain unchanged. In prophase, each chromosome has two sister chromatids due to DNA replication in interface. Each chromatid is a double-stranded DNA, so there are four strands of DNA in total. Interface and cytokinesis are part of the cell cycle that occur before and after mitosis. Mitosis is made up of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Both genes prevent cancerous growth, so if both mutated, the risk of developing breast cancer would be the highest. The photomicrograph shows a cell in anaphase. The sister chromatids are migrating to the opposite poles, hence the appearance of two distinct groups in the cell. The condensation of chromosomes should already take place in prophase. Their centromeres duplicate and lead the movement, as this is the part attached to the spindle fibers. Spindle microtubules are shortening to pull the sister chromatids apart. A is wrong because uracil is not found in DNA. B is incorrect as the two strands are not antiparallel. They run in the same direction in the picture. C does not show the correct A to T and C to G complementary base pairing. In the beginning, all DNA contain N15. When they are left to replicate in the N14 solution, the N15 strands will be used as the template. Both newly synthesized strands would be N14. That is why the first analysis shows all the DNA are hybrid. Due to the semi-conservative replication, if the hybrid DNA replicated once in the N14 solution, the parental strands join with the newly formed N14 strands, resulting in half hybrid DNA molecule and half entirely N14 DNA molecules. Transcription is the process of synthesizing an mRNA copy of a gene's DNA sequence. Only two is about the making of mRNA based on the nucleotide sequence in DNA. One and three are about the production of a polypeptide using the code in an mRNA molecule. This is the translation process. The difference between the genes is on the fourth triplet. GTG will be translated to CAC in the mRNA. The tRNA with an anticodon GUG will form a complementary base pairings with this altered mRNA codon. B is wrong because the codons after the mutation remain unchanged. C is wrong because 
mRNA does not contain thymine. D is incorrect because this would only happen if the mutated codon is a stop codon. Xylem is located near to the center in a dicot stem. So, Z is the xylem and W is the foam. The xylem would be stained as xylem vessels contain lignin in the cell wall. Cells in the phloem tissue do not contain lignin. Question 27 is removed. A thick waxy cuticle can reduce the cuticular transpiration. Sunken stomata decrease the water potential gradient between the substomatal air spaces and the outside of the stomata by trapping moist air. A rolled leaf can also trap moist air, reducing the exposure of stomata to the moving air in the surroundings. All the features decrease water loss by transpiration. Many carbohydrates are solutes. When they enter the phloem sieve tube, they reduce the water potential. This creates a water potential gradient. Water from the cells in the surrounding will enter the phloem sieve tube by osmosis, increasing the volume of liquid inside it. When the diameter of the blood vessels increases, more space is available for blood. The blood pressure will decrease. If the systolic pressure increases, blood is pumped into the iota at a higher pressure, causing an increase in blood pressure. If more blood returns to the heart, cardiac output will be greater. This leads to an increase in blood pressure. If carbonic anhydrase is inhibited, there will be a decrease in the formation of carbonic acid. Since the formation of this acid is slower, pH should not decrease. Less dissociation of carbonic acid results in fewer protons and bicarbonate ions being formed. Fewer protons cause a decrease in the rate of formation of hemoglobinic acid. A lower concentration of bicarbonate ions should decrease chloride shift as the compensation of charge changes is less required. Protons lead to a greater dissociation of oxyhemoglobin. A decrease in their formation should reduce the dissociation. You have to interpret the percentage saturation to get the answer correctly. 100% means that all hemoglobin has four oxygen molecules binding with them. 75% and 25% means that most hemoglobin molecules bind with three and one oxygen molecules. When the partial pressure of oxygen decreases from 7 to 4 kPa, hemoglobin dissociates two oxygen molecules. B correctly describes this. A is wrong because it says two atoms. C is wrong because the binding should make the next one easier. This is called the cooperative binding. D is incorrect as it states that one oxygen molecule to each hemoglobin molecule. Carbonic anhydrase causes more protons to be dissociated from carbonic acid. Protons bind to the hem group and leads to oxygen dissociation from oxyhemoglobin more readily. This is why the ball shift occurs. As the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood increases, the pH decreases. The increase in carbon dioxide concentration leads to the ball shift. A decrease in carbon dioxide concentration means that fewer protons are forming in the red blood cell. There will be less oxygen dissociated due to proton binding to the hem group. After the sinoatrial node sends out the impulse, it travels through the atrial wall, leading to atrial systole. Then, it passes through AVN, which is located between the atria and ventricles. The electrical activity will pass down the septum, where the perkine tissue is found. The tissue conducts the wave across the ventricular walls, causing ventricular systole. This question is discounted. A is wrong because Ribrio cholerae is a bacterium, not a virus. Mosquitoes are the vectors for malaria. Plasmodium is the pathogen that causes the disease. Mycobacterium bovis can cause TB in both animals and humans. D is the correct answer as the causative agent of malaria is a type of protoctis. A is incorrect as we cannot conclude the reason behind the increase of resistance from the graph. B is the correct answer as the peaks occur in 2015. C is wrong because the graph does not show us the reason behind the decrease. D is not true for tetracycline. 
B lymphocyte carries out mitosis for clonal expansion. They use their receptor to bind to specific antigens for clonal selection. Following clonal expansion, some of the cells will differentiate into memory cells to provide immunological memory. Some of the cells differentiate into plasma B cells that can produce antibodies. Monoclonal antibody injection is passive immunity as the receiver does not produce antibodies in an immune response. It can be used to treat diseases as they can bind to specific antigen. The binding of monoclonal antibodies to a specific antigen allows us to detect the presence of a specific pathogen in a sample. B is the answer because when most individuals in the population have been vaccinated, the number of infected individuals will be reduced. This decreases the chance of those who are not vaccinated to meet someone who has the disease. A is not correct because there should be a higher chance of meeting a vaccinated person. C is not true because the protection is not 100%. Some vaccinated people can still be infected. D is wrong because vaccination is artificial active immunity as it will not occur without human intervention. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.